you know, living traditions and, and all that they embody, particularly those associated with the environment, um, have, for, you know, for, for millennium in, in different communities, worked to protect the environment, for, you know, an example being often traditional subsistence activities, subsistence activities, I should say, have been key for communities in managing their resources in a way that won't deplete them, carefully managing them so that they don't over hunt, they don't use too many resources you know, from the, the, the natural environment. And a lot of the knowledge that they have in terms of subsistence activities, whether it be agriculture, whether it be hunting or gathering, whatever, uh, is, is designed to ensure that those resources last a long, long time. And that's traditional knowledge. For me, yeah, by, by its very nature, you know, living traditions, um, intangible heritage, you know, keeping in mind that's a term that's placed on a very, very, very wide range of, of um, human activities, knowledge and so on, is by nature specific to communities. That means it's very um, heterogeneous, even if there are many common elements between different forms of intangible heritage, you know, in, in different communities in the same country or different countries. It's still something which, um, you know, it's largely place specific or community specific. The traditions are very diverse um, and so in a way if you look at globalization, if you're talking about those negative impacts of globalization which are very, you know, by nature often, you know, one of the critiques is that globalization brings a homogenous, you know, um, push to in, in cultures and, and so on. Um, intangible heritage does play a role because it brings very different and forms of tradition and different ways of seeing the world which again are often very specific to communities, so they are, you know, they are unique.